Okay, uh, welcome back. Uh, we have to start now, uh, otherwise we'll not go home by 6, 6, 6 Well, the, the next paper will be from Wes Brown, who is the founder for Ephemeral Security. He'll be talking about MOS Ref using cryptography and injectable virtual machines in security. Well, Wes has an impressive list of uh, impressive uh, history in security. Prior to joining Acuvant as a senior security consultant, he was a member of the ISS x consulting team and has conducted hundreds of pen tests and uh, security assignments for them. He has also, has also spoken at various security conferences like DEF CON in the past. And um, currently he's one of Acuvant's lead consultants and uh, in the ephemeral security, where hopes to advance the state of the art in network security with this, this research with MOS Rev. And so, without uh, wasting any more time, uh, let's give a warm welcome to West. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for coming and taking the time to watch my presentation. Um, the presentation is about uh, cryptography and injectable virtual machines, which is a pretty interesting concept. Um, as he has said, I work, I founded FML Security, and FML Security's purpose is to conduct research, development, and engineering of very interesting solutions to very interesting security problems. And sometimes we pose the questions so we can solve them. Uh, I'm Wes Brown, and I'm the, I'm the founder, and he has already told you about who all I am. But um, I've been working in the field for a while, and I am a programmer, engineer, and consultant. Uh, currently, for my day job, I work for Acrobat, a United States-based company and I specialize in code reviews, application assessments, and sub-custom development. Uh, you all might be wondering what Mosquito is. Uh, Mosquito is a virtual machine environment with a lightweight framework, and it runs code remotely and securely in the context of penetration tests. It has more uses than this, but that was the focus in the original intent. Um, there, are, there are many different types of virtual machines, and there's, there's, there's hardware virtualization, which feels not about hardware virtualization. It's a lightweight application virtual machine, more like Java or .NET, except it's very small. One of the things that we try to do is ensure that the communication is secure. Um, and that's something that many other products fail to do, is to make sure that the communication is secure. Uh, you will see many hacker tools, and they make, they make connect back in a clear test. And if, you're, if you are a white hat hacker and you're trying to help the client, the last thing you want to do is hold the client by transmitting data in the clear. Um, one of the interesting things about Scalo is we, we make a very big effort to never store the code that is deployed to the virtual machine outside the process space, meaning it is not written to disk. It makes forensic activity a little more difficult. Uh, when we transmit code to the virtual machine, it makes the best effort to protect the secrets because very often people write their methodology and thought process inside the code and they don't want other people getting that code. But if we don't actually deploy it, there's no good. As I said earlier, often you may want to do old day code. I have looked for internet security systems and sometimes we use uh, code that has been discovered by the research division.
to establish that the client is vulnerable, but we don't necessarily want the ODA code to leave out control. So this is one, one, one problem we try to solve at Mosquito. Uh, Mosquito is a way to ensure that communication between the target and the console is secure. And more interestingly, because it's a for application virtual machine, it provides a dynamic remote execution environment. We can modify what's happening in the virtual machine on the fly remotely. Um, to better understand the context of uh, this video, I'm going to explain some of the more traditional approaches to deploying code on a remote system. Um, shell code is the oldest code. It is static, interruptible, loadable, and targeted to one environment. Shell code that is really for one environment often does not work in another environment. And if, this, if the system is patched, or the environment is changed, it breaks. Like if you change your NT service pack, you change the libraries, and your shell code breaks because you are mapping against the memory location in the library or the books. Um, we also have this call policies, which, which are more flexible and they're higher level. However, the problem is the driving logic is on the attacker's side. The driving the attacker's side uh, makes specific calls which are transmitted over the network and executed on the remote system. But what happens if the bandwidth is low or and uh, also it has a problem in that there's not that much you can do with this call. You are limited in what you can do with a this call problem. Um, another interesting approach is DLL injection, which is pretty neat because you can implement higher level functions easily. And we can put logic on the target side. This solves the problem with the syscall policy. However, the DLL injection methodology is uh, static. You can't change it once you have injected and it's Windows only. Then we got exploit compilers, which, which is pretty close to what Mosquito does, in that we have custom code, and then um, we, we compile it. And at compile time, we compile it to a target. Um, so, we have a concept of a lightweight application virtual machine. Uh, it can be very small. Mosquito is 128k binary size. That's the entire virtual machine. It can be even smaller for executable compression techniques, which is kind of hairy. But we may look at executable compression techniques in the future and get that down to 64k payload size. And most interestingly, if you write once, run anywhere. If it's what Java wants, is that Java is very big and very heavyweight. Code written on a Linux virtual machine will run on a Windows virtual machine on output. And when we use a lightweight application virtual machine, rather than trying to use a general purpose language, we can use languages that are specific in design for the task, network applications and network maturity. And we design our own language called Mosquito Lisp. It's very nice orthogonal uh, development environment. And it's dynamic. As I have mentioned before, code can be altered and updated even on a remote virtual machine. And it's like this will be reprogramming. We deploy a code on a toxic machine and we find that it doesn't work. We can debug and modify the code on the fly on a remote machine. Uh, we have several components of Mosquito. We got a core virtual cool 
machine, which is what one year came. Then we got the language, which is the mosquito language that developed in all the supporting libraries written in mosquito lisp. And we got the console, which whose job is to provide the user with the interface to manage and deploy drums. And then we got the drum, which we actually put on the project systems there. And it, it contacts the console and then it executes bytecode and statements that the console sends to it. Um, let's talk a little more about the virtual machine itself. It is production ready and stable. We are in beta doing it. It is lightweight and optimized for network tasks. It does support scanning very, very well. And other network type code. Um, it's easily extensible. We took and implemented Regex in a few hours. So we, we took the BSD Regex library and we, we extended it on Windows and Unix in a few hours. And more interestingly, we are pure interested. We're very affordable. Every one see, we are not under. We have the four major platforms that we develop and test on are OpenBSD, Darwin, Max OSX, Linux, and Windows. We have even tested it on embedded devices. It runs on ARM, CPU, mid CPU, and now to two CPU. We have a port to open the URC. It will run on, on your uh, wireless router if you like. Uh, one more interesting feature of uh, our virtual machine is we have a stub for each architecture and operating system that we, we support. Uh, when, we, when, we, we, when we compile this mosquito this program and application, we append it to the stub. So you compile it once. And then you can attach it to all the stubs, and you got multiple platform binaries for each architecture. The stubs are standalone. There are no zero external dependencies. We include all the dependencies that we uh, need. And uh, when, when we compile and build an executable, all the dependencies will be solved. We do a dependency analysis of the library and we include the library byte code you need. It's similar to the static linking um, cycle of a compilation. Uh, and more interestingly, all mosquito implementations have integrated ECDH and AES encryption for very good entropy generation. language itself is network-oriented in a very compact list with strong influences from Scheme. It is designed for network application is highly concurrent, meaning we would have thousands of developers and processes running at the same time, similar to Erlang. And it's very efficient in network and process API. We have a rich environment with over 300 primitive functions and 200 library functions in a standard library. That's 500 functions that you will get with every mosquito installation in 128K. Uh, it's well documented with a complete reference manual available online for download. Um, as a programmer and developer in engineering, I know how important it is to have good documentation for a language and environment. So I made a priority to have documentation. I paid a text writer to write documentation for me. Uh, the language is self-hosted. The mosquito list compiler is ready for mosquito list compiler and compiler itself. I the complex application in and itself. And that's one of the milestones of any language that is able to compile itself. 
and threatened it was the mosquitoes compiled with the one under other scheme. And this is important if you want to bootstrap it. Um, we got new stuff in the standard library. We have a get support. We have an in-memory queryable data. We have XML support. And we have HTTP support, client and server. This is included all deployments. Um, one of the major features of the speed of the content of a chain is an abstract communication mechanism. Uh, we have a cryptography channel, which means you can add anything you want to communicate. We provide the cryptography services, and it's very easy to implement secure communication using the speed of and more importantly, it provides a layer of abstraction for the actual communication that can be used. Right now, by default, we use TCP, but there's no reason why you can't use ICOM payloads, DNS, or UDP as a payload to, for communication. All the mosquito wants is a guarantee of packet delivery. Uh, so, because of this abstraction, programs do not care how communications are handled. You can do HTTP over UDP if you want. Uh, processes and all processes and subjects have a read-a-map channel that can be mapped up to other channels. It's like a telephone program. You got a process on one machine, you got another process on another machine, you can totally transparently map the, the channel between them, having any process communications. Uh, we got the drone, which is the virtual machine with cryptography functions and drone functions. It's highly optimized to reduce size. We strip out everything that we do not need for the own functions so that we have a small payload size so that we can deploy it on the target machine. It stores an attitude like code program sent by the console. And very neat, the drone will pull all the libraries it needs from the console. Once once the drone is up and running and it creates a, a connection to console, it continues to bootstrap off and it begins to pull the additional libraries you want to support your application. And it's done automatically. Um, by the code fit by the console, it's only stored in process memory. So if you if you have a program that you want to keep, you can send it to the console and you can have a reasonable uh, assurance that it's not going to be easy to steal. You would need an introspective in-memory debugger to grab that type code, or what? you would need to force the swap somehow. You have to force the, the, the daemon to swap out. We got the console, which is a virtual machine, the client code, and console. It, it, its job is to control deployed drones. It deploys drones and it controls the drones for you. And with the console, we don't need to be small because it's your machine that you control. So we provide an entire scale environment. All kinds of functions are available at the console. And we include compiler to compile the scale list statements and program for the drone on the fly. When you, when you type in a list statement, it is compiled and then sent to the drum, executed, and then sent back. The result is sent back. Uh, we got to your place for uh, interacting with drums in real time. We, we, have, we have tested it with 20 drums. Uh, and more interestingly, we create drums on the fly. We create executables custom made for you on the fly. So if you have a Linux machine, you see the Linux machine, 
we said, we, we tell the council, could you put one for me? It will take about 15 stars of the lens. It will attach to the one. It will attach to the detail from how to talk to the council, which is done at one time. And then it will also attach the private key to talk to the council. And then we then draw a place on the remote end. And, then we, and, and these parameters are used to resolve the connection back. Uh, there are some pretty neat things we can do with the Mosquito Framework. Uh, we can refactor and exploit the Mosquito for security appointment deposit. Rather than having to compile and exploit for that particular deposit, you just refactor it to Mosquito and can, you can run the exploit anywhere you have a drone. Additionally, because the Mosquito looks high level function, it's very easy to write exploits in. We have refactored a 500 line exploit into 30 lines of mosquito list. Uh, we have, we can do network and host recon. When you do network and host recon on a remote host, the results are transmitted back to the charity. So it doesn't compromise the client. Uh, we can because Mosquito can run on anything under the sun. If you write your program from Mosquito List, it will run anywhere. So if you have audit control, if you write an audit control, you can deploy it, you can, you can do change control. Uh, all dependencies are resolved by the control. Anyway, we got the demo. We are in the demo directory. And we invoke the console. And we have all these, these console functions. We have a um, copy. We can copy a file from, from a console to a drone. Or we can copy a file from a drone to a drone. We can execute list statements. We can create ones. We can create a window. We can load the libraries from a console. Um, and we can tell it where to run the command. So we can say on Windows to own do list expression. It's a full function. So we got proxy, then we got port scanner, and we can set some variables, and we got a shell statement to execute the external programs on your behalf. Um, then, one of the first things we want to do is tell console what what the IP address is. Um, the, this is the network that we'll be working from. That's the virtual machine network that is uh, we'll use it for the demo. So there. So we need to tell it what the address is. I mean, we can do, we can do automatic code, but, but very often it can be wrong. It's a very complicated thing to figure out what interface or what IP address, or maybe if you're on a mass network, you just, it's easier to just tell the console what this IP address is. So we do that. Um, We have a, a drone, a drone function. It creates a new drone institute for, in it, for the platform. So let's see what steps we have.
something of all these steps. We have a stem of Nicholas at the town PC in town, Linux in town, OpenBSD Power PC. Not much case for that. Then we got a stub of Windows NT. The post machine, I'm going to demo this for a Linux machine. So what we want to do is we want to create a Linux stub. Drum. Uh, Linux. Drum one. ESC. We need to give it a drum ID. So drum one. Linux. We need to tell it what platform the drum is. So, and the drum executable is created, and now this is the way you're coming to connect on that port. We can, we can specify what port, but right now it will pick it randomly. So the first thing we want to do is, uh, Now it's copied. Here we got the key change process. The, the drone initializes it, it sends the public key to the consoles, and it drone, and then, and then the uh, drone receives the, the, and we got the secure AES connection with the drone, with the console. And now, now that the key is changed to start, the link is up to the console. So, Let's go back to the console and see what happened. And it told us that the drone was affiliated from this address. So now we got the drone and plug the drone network. So let's take a look at nodes. And we got the list of nodes here. Now, again, we have to tell the drone uh, what address it is, but not yet. Let's just see what we can do. Um, drone one, I need it. Do plus three five. Pretty simple. It looks simple, but what's happening here is actually very complex. We got a list statement, and the console takes a list statement. Compiles it to bytecode. And then this bytecode is sent to the drone over here. And then the result, and then and the drone is told to execute the bytecode. And then the result is returned to the console. So, For an easier use, we can change the context. We got a drone one, one Linux. That means we change the context so that all commands are issued to that particular drone. Let's see if we can find some other context. Windows box in the host file here. We got Windows box in the host file here. So,
Sovas kayantas pitkalaman dos. And um, judging them how long it's taking is dropping the act packet, stin act packet. So, and we didn't get anything. So it's firewall. The windows box is firewall. So we 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 got this this host on the network. And obviously, it's got to show a purpose. So let's take a look at that. Um, well, the Linux server has a post-it. So, that means the Linux server is running a uh, mail server. So let's check it. Sure enough, the Linux server is running SMTP. Great. So, what can we do with this? Not much. Maybe so. Now, let's take a look at the password file. We got a user here. That you went to. So we got a potential user to send to for the mail server. So what we want to do is we want to create a drum, a new drum a window. And then we got drone to Windows. And then we got one in T X eighty six. Ah, I forgot to set the address. It has to know who to connect that to. So um set eighty or not equals ten, thirty seven, one twenty nine, two hundred. Which is the address for the next server. So when we create a drone, it's going to connect to the Linux server. Great, now we got the drone created on a console, which will connect to the second drone, which will connect to the first drone. Now, um, mail file. Uh, wait, we sent the drone as a Trojan in the email. So, we got our Windows virtual machine here with Outlook Express. And so let's send and receive. Cool. We got our mosquito drone that sent as a torsion deal. Looks like nothing happened, did it? Not quite so true. Here we go. We got the drone running. Who's the only secret of the Windows firewall? It does not prevent outgoing connections. If you got a if you got a service that spawns a listening, stop it. It will, it will block it.
but the firewall will not block outgoing connections, so we exploit that to our advantage. So let's go back to the console and play. Oops. Well. Okay, we got drawn two windows which connected through the Linux drawn. The Linux drawn is actually like a relay for the Windows drawn. So, what can we do with this? Right, so on drawn two windows, plus we block. Oops, on drawn two windows, two plus we Was sent out to the drone two through drone one. The result was sent back through drone one to the console. And it's all transparent, like magic. Anyway, uh, but that's not, that's not the cool stuff. So, let's say on drone two. Windows, uh, drum, uh, drum two, Linux, exe. Then we have uh, drum three, Linux, Linux, exe. Oh yeah, I need to put an address. I always forget. So, on drum to windows, okay. Wait, we got an, a third step, a third drum, which would connect through the windows drum, which would connect through the Linux drum, but to the console. Block it because the drone spawned an incoming socket. But we got to just unblock it. So now we got a three stage hop. We got the console talking with drone three to drone two and drone one, drone one and two, a relay or in between. So what can we do with that? Okay. We can do on drum. This here, in about 20 lines of code, is a tiny HTTP server. It serves out an image. That's all it does. 25 lines of code. So, and it has an import statement import the HTTP library. So, on drone 3 Linux load tiny HTTP MS. The console just, just loaded this file, compiled it to bytecode, and transmitted a function to drone 3. So now we got the functionality for HTTP server on drone 3. 
John Breeden had had the instinct to be alive or necessary, but the council took care of it in order to transmit the instinct to be alive or So, on the one, three, okay. First, we want to copy a file to serve out. Uh, and we got the file being copied through the relay again. It's kind of slow because it's doing crypto within crypto within crypto within crypto. Right now we do not intelligently just try to, to, to just pass along. Wait, we got the file. So, on to one, please. Do we want to invoke the third image function? And we get the port number. So, image 9191. Right, now we got HTTP server 191. So let's scan. Let's. Uh, 9191. Yeah. It's listening on that socket. But wait. Listen. We are assuming that the console cannot directly um, access from 3 by. It should be no problem. We got a hatch box here. It's, it's running a drone three, and the port, the, the local port is on console. So we got 27 by 30 on the local, on the local hatch box. And whatever traffic will be passed on to Drone 3 for resolve, and everything will happen with the context of Drone 3's network, including name resolution. So we got 27530. Let's go to Firefox. was done over a three drone relay. How's that for cool? Um, I still have a little bit of time, so I'm going to show you a few other neat features in the scale. Um, we have four on console which will create a new window for that, con for that context. So on drone two windows, what? We got rid of the window for drone two. Uh, on Linux and Unix, it will show up as a new external. On Windows, it will show up as a new command block window. Um, then we got uh, We got the port scanner, which I showed you, and we got the copy file, and we got the create drone, and we got the fork. Um,
Let's take a look at the DeWitt tweet. We got his core virtual machine here. And we got uh, the compiler is 14 petabytes of code. Very compact, and it's a very complex application. Let's take a look at the other byte code sizes. 1K, 4K, 474 bytes. And we can attach this byte code at the end of the virtual machine. Or we can transmit it over the network on the fly to the virtual machine. So generally, the whole process is at the we if we put whatever functionality is needed in the drama to connect back to the console. Once it connects back to the console, then we bootstrap the rest of the environment. The goal is to keep the payload size small. The drone does not have a compiler. But if you want, you can load the compiler. Um, And that's about all, and seeing as I have two minutes, and seeing that I am about, and it'll be easier for you to ask questions for me in person. That's all. Questions? Uh, are there any questions? Can you actually send a command to all the drones at one time? Can you send a command to all the drones at a, just one one time? So. Um, sure, I mean, we can script the functionality in maybe five or ten lines of list of code. We just need to iterate through the nodes list and then we call the function that send the byte code. So you would, so you would compile your byte code once. Then you iterate through the list of channels because it's an abstract mechanism. So each drone has a channel to the uh, console. So all you have to do is iterate through the list of channels and send up the byte code. Is there a limit to the amount of drones you can create? Limitations of drone. Um, you, you mean we have limitations? Limit to the number of limit to what? Limit. Uh, the drone itself does not come with the, as much functionality as the entire environment, but the common limit is um, a misnomer because, as I said, you can pull more functionality to the drone. You can pull the entire environment across the network. So, not really, no. A question on the scanning side. Are you doing full fledged yeah. scanning or? Uh, well, that's a full TCP scan. So, right now we use uh, standard um, operating system sockets. And for each socket we create, we create a small micro square. But the Speedo is cooperating with multi-threading within the virtual machine context. It doesn't use the operating system threading, which is an advantage and a disadvantage. The advantage of threads are extremely lightweight. There's no difference between a thread and a function. We have concurrent functions, so we can have massively threaded programs. But since it's not operating system threads, it will not be distributed on multiple CPUs because it looks like one thread to the operating system.
there any uh, native interfaces uh, that ask you to call system functions? And could I use any other language besides this? Uh, well, okay, I have no language, but I mean, Lisp is considered to be the programming language to program other languages in. It's very easy to write a code in Lisp, but um, the virtual machine is very much a Lisp virtual machine. It's not a general purpose virtual machine. So trying to do C would be very silly. And the earlier question I had was, could I call any system APIs? What do you mean by APIs? Um, we do not, we use um, standard LibC operating system. Uh, but right now we don't have one function interface yet. But it's very easy to create primitive functions to access the functions you want. That's how we do it like that. Um, you can ask me questions one-on-one, -on -one and the mosquito is available, but for download it is LGPL, so you can play with it if you want. Okay, uh, thank you again, Wes. So